Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Creek CAS 4040 amplifier and for many people who may be listening you'll see this uh, or categorized as a uh, classic British amplifier and that's true you know this thing sort of dates back to probably uh, late 70s with Mike Creek and the team there who designed this amplifier and they also designed you know other ranges of amplifiers as well now this is quite an early version so when you look at the serial number what I'm showing you can see it is a relatively early version and the first thing off is when he came into the workshop uh, really what was the issue well it wasn't sort of immediately apparent so when you remove the top cover uh, what you didn't see for example was any sort of burnt out components or anything like that the internal protection fuses which are used for the power supply and also for the respective output channels again were fine they hadn't blown or anything like that so the issue was that during test phase on the right hand channel of the amplifier what you could hear was like a rustling sound or, or a crackling sound but on the left channel if you move the balance right the way across that was that was quiet right channel moved across then you could hear this crackling sound almost like a rustling noise and it's got nothing to do with the user controls for example the potentiometers or anything like that that is not you know what this fault fault is but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail once we've just done the overview of the specifications now when you refer to the user manual what it will quote is that you have RMS power output 30 watts into two times 8 ohm speakers okay so what they're referring to here is, is that you have 8 ohm speakers connected to both channels and that's the maximum power that it can deliver What's strange is if you have one speaker connected, it tells you that you can have 35 watts into a single 8 ohm load, which is a little bit strange, not sort of seen that previously. And then what it also supports is switched and unswitched speaker terminals. So I've said this on previous audio tutorial repair videos. What switched means is that when you have the headphone jack socket, if you wanted to go for personal listening, as soon as you plug in your headphones, the contacts then will... And disconnect the speakers from the rear terminals if you have non switch then logically even if you connect the headphones then the speakers will still be connected and it will maintain the audio both through the headphones and also through the speakers now from the front panel they don't refer to it as a final input they just refer to it as a disc but it's actually a final input and it's designed for a moving magnet type cartridge and your millivoltage is 2.5 millivolts standard and then 47 uh, kilo ohms and then for the rest of the selections you then have a tuner auxiliary and then also a tape monitor and that's 20 millivolts signal input maximum but for the auxiliary your input impedance is 20 kilo ohms but for the tuner and tape it's higher and then that's up at 47 kilo ohms um, what's nice is that you also have the headphone socket and it takes the quarter inch jack which is great uh, I know that you know most headphones today have the smaller 3.5 but you know this is this is old school so <laughs> nice solid jack jack plug on there and you can also select um, mono mode as well okay so just blending the two signals together and then you also have the mute switch now the mute switch is more of an attenuator so when you operate it, it's not like a mute switch on a modern day amplifier where it will disconnect the input, sort of the output speaker protection relays to just disengage completely. It's just simply dropping it down. So I would imagine the design thought was that maybe, you know, if you just wanted to just you know, attenuate it, maybe someone was talking, you just wanted to chat back. Maybe that was the intention, but it's not going to... Um, shut off the audio to the speakers or to your headphone sockets just just hit mute just attenuation now what is nice is that it also has uh, separate bass treble and balance controls and then overall weight for the amplifier is 4.4 kilograms and then in terms of dimensions you're looking at uh, 60 millimeters high by 420 width and with a depth of 185 now it has this sort of uh, wooden almost like plastic type vinyl with a grain effect covering it um, to get access to the top of the amplifier or to get access to the circuit board there's just two pushing inserts left and right they're like caps and once you remove them 
you'll see that there's this, these kind of robust um, it's almost like self-tapping screws that go into there once you've removed those you just pull the cover off from the rear and it just slides away then and then you can look directly of course at the circuit board and disassembly is very very easy if you want to take the amplifier apart to get access to the boards you've got two fixing screws underneath that go through to the heatsink you have three screws on the rear which connect through to the input uh, connection sockets and then just pull the knobs off from the front and then if you turn it over you just have uh, the fixing screws which is where the metal fascia goes through you can just remove that to one side now what I also show in the video is the volume control potentiometer what you'll find is that during manufacture they fit about three spacer washers on each one of the user controls and then they have a single locking nut hold it in position and there's a common ground wire which solders onto the outer casing of the potentiometers now those locking nuts should be reasonably tight what you could see with this repair was that the volume and control locking nut was loose now the reason why I bring it to your attention is that if you see this then it's putting excess strain onto the user control because as the operator or the user touches that they're going to put some degree of pressure on and it's putting stress then onto the carbon tracks and then the pins where it solders into the board but also as well sometimes what you can get is like a noise like almost like a staticky type noise because the grounding is becoming intermittent on the volume control potentiometer if you didn't have the, the common ground on some amplifiers you literally can hear this noise so just ensure that after the repair and then um, you're reassembling just make sure those locking nuts are not overly tight you know don't strip the thread but you know are, are tight and then in terms of coming back to to the repair and really what the issue was I said to you that there was almost like a static or a white noise that was being generated now in the video because there were just the, the, if you look for the service data they'll refer to you know a version one a version two and a version three um, and those really are the three schematics that are available so the one that I'm showing here is not actually matching or identical to the amplifier that came in the workshop because the serial number for this schematic is higher than, than this amplifier here and first off you can see from the rear that it doesn't have the five pin din type input connectors they're all RCA type um, so again straight away but the reason why I'm showing this uh, schematic is that the output Darlington transistors are correct so these are these BDT 60 uh, series transistors and you also have the 1N4148 diodes which are used effectively to set the bias voltage turn on for the Darlington output transistors now the when when you're on test mode you can hear this sort of white scratchy noise um, what I also show in the video as well is a very very common test uh, tool or test equipment that I regularly use the issue sometimes with trying to track down noise is if you use maybe an oscilloscope the noise can be so low that you don't actually pick it up you know it's almost like the scope lever or the scope probe will also pick up background noise you know which is power hum within the within the air so by using an audio signal tracer I can quickly identify or I can trace through where that noise is emanating from and go back right to the point of origin so when I'm in a test phase here I don't have any speakers connected and what I'm doing is I'm just connecting to the headphone socket um, because they're over ear type you know they're not the ones which are just small foam ones it completely covers your ears and then you can listen with detail so you know these speakers or, or these headphones that I'm using really are not expensive so it doesn't have for example noise cancelling technology or anything like that I need that signal from a repair point of view to be as raw as it possibly can I don't need any filtering I'm just trying to pick up anything which could be detrimental to the end audio quality so when I get the headphone sockets in there I move that balance control right the way across on the left channel and I've got the volume up max no speakers nothing connected no signal and, and it's quiet there's a little bit you know a little bit tiny bit of power on but that's normal for the age of the amplifier in terms of how it was designed but as soon as you swung it over then to the right and you could hear this crackling sound and it was quite prominent now with the schematic they give component reference numbers 
but the board doesn't give you anything at all okay so what I show in the video is the transistor which was the issue <clears throat> and the way in which I verified that was quite simply that I'm checking on the input base to the transistor and then I'm then checking on the emitter of the transistor to find out is the signal entering there and being you know signal conditioned and then coming out or is it emanating from the transistor itself and that's what the issue was so it was a BC560B and as I say I'm, I'm also showing that one second <coughs> and that's where the noise was coming from but it was the audio signal tracer that picked it up and commonly as I have in other repair videos as well I've also used a freezer spray component freezer spray just to check if it's thermally related so I just did this on this amplifier and the noise was still present so it wasn't something that was being generated because the transistor was was warm under normal operating conditions the noise was there whether or not the transistor was warm or it was cold and all you can do is substitute it so I'll fit into there an original Fairchild which I think Fairchild got a, a, or acquired by on semi but the 560B uh, is obsolete so I have in stock the original Fairchild devices and then I'll just pop that in there new transistor in then power it up and absolutely no noise at all completely quiet so once that was done you know what what's sort of your, your next step for this amplifier well when you look from the top and the cover was removed there was no dust or anything you know, it's almost like it had come off the production line it's absolutely immaculate which is terrific so what I do while the board is up I just verify that there's no dry solder joints uh, nothing of concern and then what I'm also doing is I'm just cleaning those user controls so these are the volume base travel and um, base controls with the oxid but again they weren't even noisy but again we still cleaned it and then what you'll see is on the selection switches there are small or there's a small little access hole and you can pray or spray the oxid directly into there and just operate in multiple times just to clean the contacts and just soak up any excess that comes out um, just with some kitchen uh, towel and uh, and that's it you know the, the I clean the headphone socket of course but there's no bias adjustment to make or anything like that and I verified you know that everything was operating then you know perfectly so when you look at the repair video what I'm showing is a close-up view of the failed transistor for your own information and then I also show the transformer and that's quite substantial top of the board and then also the solder side of the board and um, what's interesting is that this amplifier uses a single integrated circuit which is used for the phono stage and again this IC now is uh, obsolete I think it was an any type device um, but you can sometimes get this issue with this white noise or static noise emanating from the uh, phono um, integrated circuit or op amp um, but not always you know it's it's commonly linked to one of the signal transistors as we see here becoming noisy so that sort of brings us to the uh, conclusion of this repair overview tutorial and uh, as I always say you know I appreciate you stopping by and listening and if you need any guidance or assistance with your own repairs or you want to share your experience by all means you know leave comments on the channel or email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com and I'll respond back to you with uh, guidance and support so all the best to you and thank you until the next time cheers bye bye